so welcome everybody. My name is Daniel Fass. I'm the head of the Department of Sociology here in Trinity. Uh, as you can hear from my very Irish accent, I'm not from here originally. Uh, I grew up in Germany, uh, moved around a good bit. I did my uh, undergraduate degree in uh, Stuttgart in southwest Germany. I did actually English and geography. Uh, so you can see already great synergies also between some of these subjects, particularly geography and, and, and sociology, which you could also do as a two-subject combination here in, in Trinity as an example. I then moved on and did a master's and a PhD at Cambridge University, um, it, moving more into education and sociology. Spent a couple of years in a, in a private research center in uh, Athens and Greece. Um, I then spent half a year at UC Berkeley in the States and then came here in, in 2008. So it's my sixth year here now. Um, but uh, I'm loving it and it's a great place to be. And Trinity obviously is by far Ireland's number one university and the department is buzzing and really at the forefront of research in a lot of areas. So what I want to do today is just uh, introduce you to some of my colleagues, who are obviously not all here, but I introduce them to you in absentia, through their research, through the teaching that we do. Also, I want to talk to you about assessment techniques that we use, study and work exchange opportunities that you have with us, how the degree program works, different pathways of studying sociology here in Trinity, and then we also want to open it up the last 10, 15 minutes or so for any questions that you might have. There is also two stands, so please do visit them. There's nice suites, pens, uh, bookmarks, leaflets, etc., both in the exam hall and in the old dining hall as well. For those that are more interested in the two subject combinations, so sociology plus X, they should go to the old dining hall because the TSM focus is there. The rest that are more business economics oriented or more humanistically oriented with philosophy on board, alongside sociology, political science, economics, uh, the examination hall would be the venue. Staff are there from the department, so that is an opportunity to actually meet and greet uh, other members of staff, plus PhD, uh, not PhD, undergraduate students, in our case, uh, that are in their final year, so they would be able to really give you an insight, having experienced four years with us, what life is like and what the degree program is like from their perspective. Okay. So a lot of you will probably, given that this is not a school subject, ask what the heck is sociology in the first place? Well, in a nutshell, it's the study of individuals in society. It's the study of people, of individuals, of groups, etc., in society, how they interact, for instance. And that can be around the topic of migration. Where do people migrate? Where do they move? How do they settle down? How do they integrate, incorporate in a school, for instance? What kind of challenges arise as a result of that? That comes into my area then, for instance, I'm at the interface of education and migration. So how does the curriculum, for instance, addresses the presence of migrants? Does it need to be reformed? So policy, it feeds into policy making then as well. So the, that in a nutshell is some of the aspects of what sociology is all about. P studying people and society and making then some sort of policy relevant recommendations as well. And it can be across a whole range of areas. It doesn't have to be migration at all. Conflict studies is another very big strand in the department. I come to that as I take you through the individual strands. If you go to our website here, um, tcd.ie forward slash sociology, um, you, can, you can read a lot more about each of these individual teaching and research areas. You can see a lot more about our study and working abroad programs and also about testimonials that other students wrote that have gone through our degree programs. And of course, join us on Facebook. Uh, and get the latest updates for seminars and so forth, should you then ultimately decide to join us. Now, there's four pathways, broadly speaking, of how you can study sociology here in Trinity. Number one, now this is not a, a hierarchy by the way. The, the first option, one option, is philosophy, political science, economics and sociology. The School of Social Sciences and Philosophy in Trinity, there's 24 schools in total across the entire campus. 12 schools are in the Faculty of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences. And one of these 12 schools in the Faculty of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences is the School of Social Sciences and Philosophy. And that breaks down into the disciplines of economics, political science, sociology and philosophy. So we have great synergies uh, among these four departments and we feed and founded in 2008 this program here, where each discipline is on board. And the idea and mechanism behind that is 
as indeed for the second one, it's very interdisciplinary. So in your first year, you study everything, all these four subjects. But at the end of each year, you decide which subject you don't like anymore and get rid of it and retain the rest. You do that at the end of your first year, second year, and you can also do that at the end of your third year. Ending up then with just one single honors, or in your final year you have the option, if you don't want to get rid of a subject, you can hang on to both. So that's in a nutshell PPES. It is more uh, oriented towards the human, hu human humanities because of the philosophical component that's in there. If you are a more business inclined, economics inclined student, but you nonetheless want to have sociology also on board, then BES is the better option. That's a very long-standing, successful program in Trinity. Uh, and as with the first one, that is a more recent innovation, studies a range of disciplines in first year, including political science, including sociology, including business, economics, but you can also get things on board such as law, a language, etc. So you can take modules from, uh, from these other areas as well. It is not only housed in the School of Social Sciences and Philosophy as the first option, but it is serviced by two schools, the School of Business and the School of Social Sciences and Philosophy own this BEST program and are the main feeders into this one. So that's the second option. Third option is you're already set on a more narrower choice. You know that sociology is the thing you want to do and you just simply want to team it up with the second subject. And there is almost an infinite number of second subjects. Psychology, a language, uh, um, history of art and architecture, theology, world religions, uh, and so on and so forth. So that's also possible. So you can combine uh, sociology with geography, with French, with Italian, with religious studies, and so forth. So that's a more narrow focus then. You really need to be set on the idea sociology will become part of my um, later years in college. Whereas here, in the first two, you leave all options open whether you want to take sociology in your third and final year in Trinity or not. And then you can have a more social policy oriented program uh, in this one here, sociology and social policy. So that's where things like aging, health, housing issues, more policy relevant issues than you would have in the normal mainstream sociology come into the equation. So if that's your thing, then maybe sociology and social policy is uh, a good option. This is co-taught by us uh, in sociology, but with the School of Social Work and Social Policy. That's yet another of these 12 schools within our faculty. So this time it would be the School of Social Work and Social Policy, and our, the Department of Sociology within the School of Social Sciences and Philosophy that co-teaches this program. So these are the four main pathways to doing sociology with varying emphasis uh, and subject combinations. Now, if we just now focus on sociology only, then you have, like with all the programs, they run four years. So in first year, it is that interdisciplinary mix that regardless of what program you're in, you have to entertain everything. All disciplines within our school. So economics, there's an economics module, there's a political science module, and there is the intro to sociology module that I've run for the last six years. Um, then as you go up the ranks and go to what we call senior freshman year, so the freshman years are the first two years in college, uh, so in the senior freshman year you have a methods module, so these are the tools to carry out research. So what is a questionnaire for instance? What is an interview? When is it most beneficial to use? Etc. Then you have a module called European Societies. That gives you a very broad overview and comparison of a range of European societies and how they are positioned, for instance, with regard to responses to um, diversity, responses to labor market systems. You've probably heard of uh, Esping Andersen's Three Worlds of Welfare, Capitalism. So the Nordic Scandinavian countries have a different tax system, for instance, and operate differently to the Mediterranean countries, for instance. Uh, so all of this will feature in, in this particular module. The ones of you that like more gender issues or anthropological issues, uh, subcultural uh, aspects of subculture, then this module, Gender, Culture and Society, would be very attractive. And our latest addition, Power, State and Social Movements, is really a crossover of sociology and political science around issues of um, state, governmentality, power in, in uh, society. So that's the freshman years. 
More choice than as you go up into what we call the sophister years. So these are your third and final year. Again, you have the option here and you always choose here. So you don't do all of them. You have the option of taking a methods module um, following on from what you did there in second year. Then we have one module around globalization and development, which takes in aspects of India and China, so developing country issues. You have a theoretical module here, which goes all the way from Marx, Weber, and Durkheim and the classical sociologists to the most current ones, the likes of Michel Foucault, the French philosopher, for instance, and, and many others. You have a module around identity, race, and ethnicity. You can already see that issues of migration, ethnicity, uh, are center stage in the department alongside some other areas. But this is expressed, of course, we, we, we teach what we research. So all our teaching is influenced and inspired by what we research. And it therefore translates into these module titles. And then our most recent one, Social Inequalities. This is a new innovative module where we bring in a number of uh, senior people from the Economic and Social Research Institute. That's Ireland's um, flagship um, think tank uh, that uh, carries out social and economic research and we have a number of staff that from this year onwards, uh, it has just started uh, in the current academic year, co-teach with us a module on social inequalities, which really is a very nice thing because you get um, a real insight into what uh, a government uh, sponsored high profile research institute that is not a university researches and what they do in collaboration with us as a, as a university department. Then you move into your final year, uh, where you have again a range of modules. For those that have now sociology as their major subject, they want to major in sociology, doing a dissertation is mandatory. Um, that's the only thing when something is mandatory in the entire program actually. But this is also in many ways the fun part of the whole degree. Because for the first time, you'll have the chance to carry out a significant research project under one-to-one -one supervision with a member of staff for half a year on a topic entirely up to you. So you make, the, you make up the topic, choose a supervisor, and then carry out original new field work in a school, in an organization, in the streets, wherever you like, uh, in a sports club, on a topic that interests you, and you write this up. Uh, given all the methodological, theoretical knowledge and thematic knowledge that you have accumulated over the four years. This, of course, is very good then in terms of moving on into master's programs or indeed the labor market if you are able to, to say that you have carried out a, an actual research project and you have written that up in a successful manner. Now, other modules that are more thematic in orientation are migration, one of our key research strands, conflict studies, which includes aspects of Northern Ireland and uh, the Northern Ireland Peace Agreement. Um, Kosovo is an area, Iraq, Iran, so various conflict hotspots historically or current are in that module. Then we have, following on from what I showed you in the senior freshman year, a module on popular culture, this time teamed up with digitalization. So this would study, for instance, the impact of social media on individuals in society, Facebook, Twitter and the likes. Then the other one is around employment studies, labor market issues. So for instance, how migrant women or women in general participate and are incorporated into the labor market. Is there equality or are there inequalities around pay issues, for instance, and participation in, in general. So that's in economic sociology of Europe. So these are the modules that we currently have. Now, like I said, in terms of research, and because research informs what we teach, migration is a very big strand. So I've just put up a few projects that we have done over the years to give you a little flavor of what is behind that word migration. So for instance, I've done studies looking at the provision of religious education across a range of primary schools in the country. I've also been very interested in issues of um, how um, policy making addresses increasingly diverse classrooms and how companies and schools manage the increasing ethnic, cultural and religious diversity. That's my own research area. Staff have also been interested in the um, large Polish community in the country. So there was this uh, project on implications of Polish migration to Ireland uh, and also more recently of course the phenomenon that a lot of Irish graduates emigrate. Um, 
there have been um, projects on uh, integration uh, around a range of new immigrant communities in European societies. So that's broadly under the umbrella of migration. So, the odd cartoon. Nonetheless, it's very uh, significant. So what does it say? We're a very tolerant society, but you, if you don't behave like us, you can go back to where you bloody came from. It's a very sort of assimilationist, monocultural ideology behind that, and that's one of the aspects that I will be discussing and bringing up in my introduction class when the topic of migration is, is first introduced. So aspects around assimilation uh, and uniformity um, as or this one here around citizenship tests. You've probably heard that, that a number of European societies have introduced barriers, have introduced tests um, when migrants want to become naturalized. This is called the citizenship test. So all this diversity goes in here on the one side, I think this is an Australian cartoon, and they all come out look alike and behave alike, uh, totally assimilated, made uniform, standardized on the other hand. This is of course not what should happen, but what is often the case across a range of European societies, when governments say um, or, or adopt a more assimilationist stance that people need to leave their culture and linguistic back at the airport uh, um, security check, uh, rather than bringing that and fusing it with the host culture, language and society that they're moving to. So that's what this graph would show, for instance. Another big strand, and there's a few names up there uh, from colleagues who are working in this area, is conflict studies. So I've already mentioned Israel, um, I've actually should have, uh, I didn't mention Israel-Palestine, so that's a big area. Kosovo, I've mentioned, I've mentioned uh, the troubles in the north from an historical point of view. So all, all of these aspects are part of that other cluster of researchers that we have in the department. Digitalization, I've mentioned. Uh, employment studies, we have just formed a new migration and employment research center because there's a lot of overlap. So staff that would do things on, in, on employment studies would also look at migration issues and it, often you can't study things in isolation. So that's also the reason why a lot of our programs are interdisciplinary in first year. And indeed, if you go out there and you look at what does the European Commission fund in terms of research projects, it's never just the economist, the sociologist, the political scientist. There are always consortia made up where there are people from all these disciplines studying a topic like um, diversity management or, or other topics. So that's kind of the philosophy why we, have, uh, why we ask you to study all these disciplines in your, in your first year. Now this, this I took in a, in a, also relates to labor market issues in Nairobi uh, a number of years ago. Uh, I also used this in, in my first year course, just around uh, work conditions, uh, etc. which here in a jeans factory, uh, quite interesting here. Um, so you see for instance flags here, they signal productivity in this company. So the red ones wouldn't be on target producing their jeans, whereas the green ones are. So the supervisor here, I think, sits on this table here, I think. Um, so he's looking for what's going on here, and this is a way, bad way, probably, of signaling productivity. So we talk about those kind of issues and work conditions in developing countries, comparing it with what's going on in, in Western European societies. Or here, another one, Kibera is a, is a large squatter settlement, so that feeds into the development module as well that I talked to you about earlier on. So I took that in Kibera, which is a, a, a slum area, uh, the second largest slum area in Africa, in, in, uh, in Nairobi. Um, and uh, yeah, so we talk a bit, little bit about development issues as well. Okay, so these are the thematic areas. Now, how do we go about assessing things? Because that's often what students want to know first when they arrive from, from high school. Uh, how do I get through first year? Well, uh, we have a range of um, assessment techniques. It's not just down to passing the annual exam. There's portfolios, there is presentations, there is essays that you write along the way. So it's really a very diverse range of things that you do. You have the opportunity to carry out your own little, uh, not just in finally at the research project, but you do mock interviews or just to get your hands on how to do an interview as you move on along the years. Sociology has the big advantage that it's fully semesterized, unlike some of the other um, departments. What does that mean? 
Um, our, sem our semester will run from October to December and is fully assessed in that slot. And then we we'll run again from January till April. And the annual exam period is then in May. But the, the content that occurs in that exam is only from January to April. Nothing from October to Christmas is relevant for the annual exam. That has the nice touch of allowing you, of course, in third year uh, to easily go away for half a year or a full year uh, without missing anything because there is no assessment component in the half year that you would be going away, for instance. So there's a lot of, uh, tr uh, it's trickier in some of the other departments around that because they have year-long modules and if you then decide to go away in the second half of the year, they'll ask you to double the workload because your annual exam is missing and you should have normally been in that. So there's a little bit of, a, of an issue around that. So th that's the term structure. We also teach, in, in addition to all the subject knowledge, of course, transferable skills, what I call transferable skills. So these are very relevant skills that uh, employers would look for, such as communication, presentation skills, being able to speak in front of others, argumentative communication skills in the form of how to structure an argument properly, on paper or uh, orally. Um, yeah, so all of this is part of this idea of transferable skills. Now, I keep on going on about studying and working abroad, so just a few more slides there before we start opening up to everybody. Uh, you really have the unique opportunity of going half a year or a year abroad. That applies for the other disciplines as well. Uh, and this is a great way because an increasing number of people get firsts. How do employers want to uh, separate you apart? Well, one way of doing this is really through going abroad. Uh, and you can work abroad, you can study abroad, uh, and there are an, almost an infinite number of options where you can go. But it allows you uh, to say, in addition to the first, I've also been able to show that I can operate successfully in a, in a culturally, linguistically, totally different environment, in an academic system that's entirely different from what I experience in Ireland. And the Irish system is totally different, for instance, from what you see in, in Germany or in Spain or in, or, or in Greece. So for instance, there would be no tutorial uh, service offered in a German university. There wouldn't be the sorts of even things that we're doing here today. It'll be much more, you know, uh, swim or sink uh, and, and a more hands-on approach from, from students, I suppose, rather than doing things in tandem in the university. I mean, I'm exaggerating slightly, but, but they're great differences uh, and you'll experience that as you go abroad then at some stage that all these academic uh, institutions vary greatly. And of course it's a great way for bonding, making new friends, socializing, etc. And often creating very lifelong uh, friendships out of these uh, opportunities abroad. I've listed here all the ones we currently have. So there are 12 non-EU ones, there are 10 European ones. They include really quite high-flying universities like the Sorbonne in Paris. A university of Copenhagen is a top 30 university. Charles University in Prague is ranked extremely highly. Uh, we have an increasing number of uh, international universities, uh, also now in India, where a new focus of, of Trinity College uh, is in terms of engagement with uh, other countries. We have very long-standing exchanges in Australia, in Singapore, uh, the entire University of California system from Berkeley, UCLA, and so forth. Here are just some of the images from those that went. Now, another burning area, of course, is what do I do with that sociology degree? Well, here you go. So we have got people into consulting, marketing and management. Uh, many go into academia and teaching, uh, the media, journalism, another one, or advisory roles for the government, for the public service, because a lot of what academics also do is go to stakeholder meetings, so I've often been invited to the Department of Education uh, because education is my area. Uh, for instance, when they drew up the intercultural education strategy in this country, so we would often be invited along to those kind of uh, meetings as well to get our input into policy formulation, for instance. And that you can, of course, do as a, as a profession in its own uh, as well. So that's just some of the options. I pause here because I also want to give you 10 minutes to um, ask me any questions that you have. Who wants to go first? And don't be shy, this is very informal, it's a dialogue, it's a good opportunity to ask a question that may well be relevant to many others in the room, so feel free to ask. 
And the others, I would, I would just ask, just stay in your seats for five minutes. The question may well be relevant and uh, good if we take maybe three, four, five questions. Go ahead. Um, and as loud as possible so that everybody can hear it. Uh, After the sociology degree, really up to you or what the employer also seeks. Um, nothing much we would say or advise. It really depends on the individual, also the company where where you want to be going. But it's just broadly speaking that people have gone into journalistic careers or or have moved on to yeah that kind of area of, of jobs. Yes. Uh, what are the contact hours? Okay, yeah, I should have said perhaps a little bit. Um, in most of the uh, modules, you have one or two lectures per week, and you also have a tutorial on top of that. The tutorial gets delivered by a PhD student, so that's a very small group. The lectures can be very large, so this can be quite a small group actually for a lecture that can be significantly larger than that, uh, not just in sociology, also in economics and political science. But then there is... Um, very small group tutorials that are delivered by a PhD student on top of that. So if you work it from there, you can roughly work out how many contact hours that would be with the staff member, with the PhD student in terms of these tutorials over the modules. You would take modules to the value of 60 ECTS. Uh, if you have two subjects, then 30 in each subject. Each course or module carries uh, 10 ECTS for the year. So that means if you are on a TSM subject combination, sociology, geography, You'll be taking 30 credits here, 30 credits in the other subject. Given that it's 10 credit modules, you take three in sociology per year and three per annum in geography. Next question. I think it was at the back, someone. No? Okay. Anybody else? Please. The entry points vary greatly from, and they vary, for instance, even within these two subject combinations, from combination to combination. So sociology and psychology, for instance, would be significantly higher than, say, um, sociology and uh, a language. So uh, if you go to the stand in the old dining hall, um, we have uh, a table there, photocopied, uh, where you can see the points for each of the combinations that we do. There's almost an infinite number of combinations. They would be, again, different for the BES and for the PPS program. PPS is higher than BES. That's the most exclusive program where sociology is involved in. It's a small program, only very recent. It's in the sixth year now, but that requires a, a much higher point, CAO points than the BES. Next question. And they also vary from year to year. Please. Um, if you take uh, PPES, do you have access to the full range of modules that you take sociology as part of that? Yes, and for sociology, there are no mandatory modules. So you really can pick from what I've just shown you. And, and uh, regardless of what program you're in, you always have access to the full list of modules that I've just shown you. Next question, please. Yeah? Is there much politics and political science in the TSM course? Uh, um, political science does not participate in the TSM program. So you will not be able to combine sociology with political science, or for that matter, you will not be able to combine political science with just one subject, with two exceptions, law and geography. These are the only two subject combinations that the political science department allows. But they are not participating in the TSM program as such. Next one. How many places do you have available for international students? Oh, for international students, there's no quota on international students. Other questions? There are quotas overall for each of these programs for capacity reasons, but within that, there is no quota that we need to say, oh, we must have 10 students from China and 15 from Brazil. Um, any other questions? Feel free. Okay, so I thank you very much for coming along.